Welcome to the CCA MacBook Backup Guide. In this section, we'll cover preparing your files and folders for backup. The first step in preparing to backup your MacBook is to make sure we eliminate as many files and folders as possible. Any unnecessary files and folders will simply increase your backup size. Think of this as an opportunity to clean house in your virtual machine. To begin, we need to close any running or open applications or programs. In my case, you can see I have Google Chrome open here to the CCA web page, along with several other apps that you can see down here in the dock. You can tell which ones are running by the blue spotlight underneath. So I have iPhoto, QuickTime Player, which I'm using to record the screencast so we won't be closing, Google Chrome, and iTunes running. We'll start by closing Google Chrome. Notice that by simply closing the window, we do not close the actual program. You can tell Chrome is still running up here and still has its icon down at the dock. We need to close the programs by selecting Quit from their main menu. We'll repeat that process for each of iPhoto and iTunes. Now we have only the screen, screencast recorder running, which is what I want for this application. It's important that we close our running applications because as we remove old files and folders and as we make a backup of your machine, these files and folders might still be in use by applications that are running. This would prevent us from backing them up or moving them. So from any, folder, from any finder window, such as the desktop or a folder window, you can tell because of the finder up here in the top left corner, select Home from the Go menu. You can also use the key command, Command Shift H, to reach your home folder. After launching your home folder, please make sure you're not in the icon view here, or in the tile view here, but rather in the list view here. This gives us some more information about the files and folders we'll be removing, and it can be very helpful. Now, in your home folder, you should see a number of files and folders. Everyone should have documents, downloads, music, movies, pictures, library, public, and sites. Some of you may have applications, which we needn't worry about, or other files and folders, such as Dropbox here, or NetBeans projects, which were created by applications that I installed. You may also have application folder or folders in your home folder, which you've created for the purposes of sorting out documents and files. We need to go through these files and folders to remove any old or unnecessary files. So we'll start with the desktop. I have a burn folder here that I no longer need, as well as a LibreOffice screenshot. This is the perfect time to show you a multiple select tool. In order to select multiple files and folders, we can select them independently and delete them, or we can hold the command key, the Apple key sometimes, and select each file and folder we want to remove. So I'm going to remove the burn folder, my office screenshots folder here, and this photo. After selecting them, you can release the Apple command key, and they'll stay selected. You can now simply drag these to the trash, or use the key shortcut command delete as I'll do here. This can make it a little easier and less cumbersome to delete files and then dragging them to the trash one by one. That's as much as I can remove from my desktop here. We'll move on to documents. In my documents folder there's several, so several files in here I no longer need. Everything from this file to this file here. An easy way to remove multiple files in, that are in a contiguous list like this is to press the Folder at the file or folder at one end of the boundary, hold the shift key and select the other folder or file, and it will select everything in between. This can make it very easy to select very large sections of files and folders, even ones that are on different scrolls. So, for example, if I select this, I can scroll down and select one way down here, and all the files and folders in between will be selected. I'm going to click away from that because I don't want to delete all of it. I just need to delete both of these Europe trip DVDs that I'd worked on for my dad. Again, we can use the command delete uh, key code to remove them or simply drag them to the trash. In your documents folder, you'll see a Microsoft user data folder. Be careful not to delete this as it holds your email and your entourage contacts. We'll be backing these up in a separate manner later. Sometimes it can be useful to sort the list of documents or other files by their date modified. Simply select the date modified bar here at the top by clicking on it once and you'll see that the folders and files become reordered by their latest modified dates. This can make it very easy to select a number of files and folders after a certain date in the past. We'll close the documents folder now. 
We also need to go through our movie folder, our music folder, and our pictures folder for sure. The downloads folder can be skipped as this will contain mostly files and folders that you can reobtain from the internet at a later date, thus ensuring you have the latest versions. It also can be much easier to go through your library pictures using the iPhoto app utility rather than by going through the files in the folder here. We can launch iPhoto by clicking on the iPhoto library or by using the regular iPhoto library link in your dock or in your applications folder. I'll launch it by double clicking on the library folder here. Once in iPhoto, you can delete files from the iPhoto library as you normally would have. I have a number of backed up copies of European pictures here. And again, selecting one boundary, holding shift, and selecting another boundary will select all the contiguous files and folders. And again, holding command will let you pick out individual pictures to more easily delete them. We can also delete these by hitting the delete key. There they are, removed. This is going to gr drastically reduce the size, of our, the size of our backup, removing some of these larger pictures and video files. I'll close iPhoto now, again from the quit menu, and show you how to determine the size of each folder or file. For example, my documents folder here. We only have a limited amount of space on our DVDs for backup, 4.7 gigabytes for a DVD, or for whatever size your flash drive may be, 4, 8, 12, or maybe 16 gigabytes. You can see that by default, the file size, the folder size isn't shown, only the sizes for individual files. We can change this by going to the View Options from the Finder menu. So we select the View menu, Show View Options, and you can see that there is a checkbox down near the bottom that says Calculate All Sizes. When we click on that, you can see that the operating system is going to begin calculating file sizes for each of these folders by totaling the number of files inside. For some larger folders such as my Dropbox here and my downloads, it can take a little bit longer because of the number of files it has to calculate. Another way to see the information about a folder such as its size is to select it and then from the file menu select the get info tab. You can also access this using the key command, command I, for info. This will bring up an information pane about that folder with the title at the top and the size listed right here. You can see there are 832 items in my documents totaling 129.6 megabytes. This is quite acceptable. Because I do not use Entourage for my email, you guys can expect these files to be much larger when you do. We can close this window. There we are, it's finished calculating the file size for each of my files, and we can see that my music folder is very large. This means that I'm going to need to concentrate on this to free up as much space as possible. This is more easily done from iTunes. Here we have a list of Celtic music that I no longer need, or I can re-download from iTunes. Again, by selecting one end, and selecting, holding the shift key and selecting the other, I can select everything between the two. And again, simply pressing the delete key will ask if I wish to delete the songs. I'm going to go ahead and select yes. And I'm going to go ahead and say move the files to trash. There we are. We'll go ahead and quit iTunes. The folder size has not yet changed because I've not emptied the files from my trash. If we proceed to do that now, you can see the file size drops already to 3.67 gigabytes. So we've lost a couple of hundred megabytes from that file folder. This will reduce the size of the backup. Close all running programs before beginning your backup process. Remove old and unnecessary files from your home folder. Do not remove the Microsoft user data folder inside of documents. And use iPhoto or iTunes to sort through pictures and music files. Thank you.